everyone, it's Miss Lisa, the art teacher. Welcome back to my table of art. I miss you all very much and I hope you're all doing well. Hope you miss me as much too. Hey, listen, welcome back to the new school year. I have a lot of great things planned for art this year and I'm so excited to introduce them all to you. But I wanna tell you a little bit about what I've been doing with my time, my free time while I'm not in art class. This weather now is like my favorite weather for several reasons. One, because I get to put on my sweaters and stay oh so comfy cozy because it's a little bit cold outside, but not too cold where I need a jacket, just a nice warm cozy sweater. And the sun is still shining, bringing heat to me and I could sit out and play out all day long and not have to worry about being too cold or too hot. It's perfect season. Another reason why I love this time is because it's the best time for apples. And I love apples, but most of all, I like apple picking. So I spent a day with my family. We went out to the apple orchards. My children brought a couple of their friends with them and we picked apples all day while I wore my cozy warm sweater and the sun was keeping me nice and warm. So I had a great day out at the apple orchard. My son's friend, he's in a wheelchair. He had no problem coming with us because at the apple orchards, the orchards are nice and flat so he could wheel in and out without any problem. And in order to pick the apples, they give you these big long sticks and at the end of the sticks, it's like there's hands out there that when you pull a lever, the hands close. So when you go up for an apple, the hands close out around the apple, sort of like this. And you can pull the apple down off the tree. This is one of the apples I picked from the tree at the apple orchard. Look at the beautiful colors in here. It's a little red, it's a little yellow. In the center here, I see some green. This is a gala apple, one of my favorite kind of apples. They're not too tart, they're not too sweet, they're just right. Hey, there's a story about the three bears that sounds just like that. Too hot, too cold, just right. Well, that's my apple, just right. There's a lot of different color apples. Most people think of an apple, they think of the color red. Well, red, 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 apples aren't only red. I have a great picture I could share with you to show you some of the different colors of apples. It's a beautiful picture too. I'll tell you, it's a nice picture to paint. Maybe we'll do that this year. Okay, look at this picture I have. How beautiful are all those apples? This is the one that I picked at the apple orchard. And these are some other beautiful colors. Look at the green ones. Oh wait, look at this dark one in the back. That's a really dark red. And those are called crispy apples. And if you needed to think what color the apple is. It's a deep burgundy color. What do I know if I use all my senses, like my sense of smell, my sense of taste, my sight, my hearing, my touch? What color could I figure out burgundy to be? Well, when I was a little girl growing up, my father used to have a glass of wine for dinner. And it was that dark red burgundy color. It was burgundy wine. So if you've ever smelt a glass of burgundy wine, that's the color. Burgundy is like the smell of a glass of wine. What other things do I know that are burgundy? Hmm, beets. Did you ever eat a beet that's been cooked? <gasps> beets are delicious. Beets are that rich red burgundy color. But let me show you some other apples that I had in that bunch there. Let's see, Whoop, gotta turn it back on. Sorry, let me bring up that picture again because I wanna show you the other colors. How about, oh, back to the green one. If I was thinking about the color green, look how beautiful. Is that a picture within a picture? I'd love to paint that. Green apples are the best for baking apple pie. And apple pie is one of my favorite desserts. So listen up. If there's anybody in your house that's making an apple pie with Granny Smith green apples, you must tell them to save you a slice for Miss Lisa, your art teacher. Okay? Is it a deal? 
Apple pie is my favorite dessert, and there's nothing better than a warm slice of apple pie. <sighs> Delicious. Okay, let's talk about green, the color green. What do we think of when we think of the color green? Well, in the summertime, when the lawn man comes and mows my lawn, I smell the grass. And that's the color that I would think of when I think of green. The smell of the fresh cut grass. That's green, green. What else can I think of when I think of green? Celery. Have you ever bit into a stalk of celery? <coughs> Crunchy celery. That's the color green as well. So we could hear the color green with the celery. <coughs> we could smell the color green with the fresh cut lawn. Can we hear the color green? Well, when the wind is blowing the pine trees back and forth on a crazy windy day, pine trees are green and we could smell them. Pine trees are the Christmas trees. The smell of pine is the color green. Very good. Okay, what other colors are in my picture of apples? Let me pull it up again. Alrighty. So we had the green apple, the burgundy apple. How about the red apple? What kind of things can we smell, taste, hear, see, feel for the color red? Red. Well, strawberries. Did you ever smell a strawberry or taste a strawberry? They're really delicious. That's the color red or licorice. Oh, I love red licorice. That smells like a cherry and that's delicious. Cherries, cherries are red too. We could smell the strawberries. We could taste the licorice. Let's see, can we hear the color red? I can't think of anything right now. Ooh, fire. That's not it. That's scary. I don't like fire, but sometimes you could see the fire red. How about something, oh, a fire engine. Not the fire, but a fire engine. When you hear that fire engine coming, fire engines are big and red, red fire engines. So that's seeing, hearing, tasting, and smelling the color red. Very good. What other color we have? Let's see. Let's do one more and then we'll keep going, okay? We'll keep going on my subject. Whoops, I'm gonna try to get back into, there we go. Okay, so we had our burgundy apple, which is the burgundy wine, our green apple, which is the Granny Smith apple, our red apple, which we think of strawberries, cherries, a fire engine. How about the yellow one up on top? Yellow. What do we think of when we think of yellow? Well, did you ever taste a lemon or smell a lemon? Oh, they're tart when you suck on them. Lemons are so tart. Makes your mouth go puckered and you squeeze your cheeks in after you taste a lemon. But you know what? That's the color yellow. You can smell a lemon, which really smells pretty. You can taste the lemon no matter how tart it is. Can we feel the lemon? How could we feel lemon? Oh, you know what? A sunflower is yellow. If you want to feel the beautiful um, petals of a sunflower, that's yellow. Okay, so let's move on from our colors seeing, smelling, tasting, feeling, and hearing colors. Because we can do all of those with color. We're gonna start our project. Since it's apple season, which I love the very best, and apples are delicious, and it's the beginning of the new school year, we're gonna do an, a project with an apple. And it's gonna look something like this when we're done. Can you see that? There's the colors that we were just talking about, red, yellow and green. And that's the colors in the apples, like the ones that I picked when I went apple picking. See my basket of apples? You can see those colors in there. You can see some of the red, you can see some of the yellow. And if you look it really close over here in the stem of the apple, you might not be able to tell from your screen, but there's all green deep inside of this little gully here. And what's this at the top? That's the stem of the apple. This is how this apple hangs on to that branch of the apple tree. Sometimes there's a leaf attached to it when I pull it down, because that's all part of the apple tree. So here we go again. Here's the big apple that we're going to make. And we're going, what? Oh, did somebody ask me what's in the middle? 
Oh, see this in the middle of our apple tree or apple project? That's a worm. Hey, worms got to eat too. And they love apples just as much as I do. You see him with his big wide open eyes? Well, we're going to make an apple with a worm in it. Just so long as we don't eat it, he's welcome to the apple. Okay, so let's get started. Those of you that are watching me from home, don't you worry, I'm sending all your stuff home that you need to make this project. And those of you that are in the classroom, don't worry, I'm sending that into your teacher as well. We're all going to start out with a big white paper plate. This will be the base of our apple. I'm going to also send you each a piece of red construction paper. Now this is optional. If you have yellow and green construction print paper at home, use it to add to the color of the apple. Otherwise, your apple will be red and that's okay. Miss Lisa did red, uh, yellow and green only because I have a big scrap box and these are scraps that I found in my box. I don't throw away any of my scraps because I always use them. I'm also sending you home a piece of brown construction paper for the stem of your apple. I'm using a scrap from my box again. And you're also going to get another small piece of green construction paper for the leaf attached to the stem. Again, I'm using my scrap. How about that worm? What are we going to use for the worm? Well, I'm going to send you a fuzzy brown pipe cleaner. We're going to manipulate this pipe cleaner, add some eyes, which you're also going to receive two white dots that will be part of the worm. They will be his eyes because when he hears that crunching of the apple, he's going to have his wide eyes because he's going to be so scared that those crunches are next going to be him. But don't worry, we're not going to eat the worm. We're just going to manipulate him and put him in our apple. But there's some things that you're going to need from home. You're going to need a black marker because we're going to make the dots in the center of the white dots to make his eyes really wide open. You're also going to need some glue. You could use liquid glue. You could use a glue stick. You could pour some glue in a little bowl that something you don't have to save, something you could throw away and paint the paste onto your plate. Whatever works best for you works for me. And I think that's it. So how about we get started? First thing I want you to do is take your red construction paper. We're not using scissors today. We're using our hands and we are just going to rip and tear and rip and tear until we get little pieces of red construction paper. Notice the edges of the construction paper. They're kind of rigid. You know, they're not straight, cold lines. They're kind of like some rigidy, organic kind of edges. And that's what I want you to get. When you whip and tear your red construction paper until you have no more. Don't make them too big and don't make them too small. If you make them too small, you'll be here all day. So here, I take a section at a time. It's easier to handle and rip and rip and tear and what I'm doing is I'm collecting them on my paper plate and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use my helping hand who also seconds as a back scratcher to bring the screen down so you can see what I'm doing on my table of art ready I'll see you in a minute okay so I'm starting to collect the pieces that I've ripped and tear rip and tear and rip and tear. So just continue doing this until you have no more. I've already prepared some, so I'm just gonna throw them on my plate. But I want you to do it until you have no more construction paper, okay? And when you're done, we will start gluing them onto the plate, okay? So I'm gonna bring you back up because I'm gonna explain something to you. Now, when we glue, the pieces of ripped and torn construction paper onto the paper plate, we're going to overlap the pieces. That means one on top of the other. One on top of the other. We're not going to cover each piece where it only looks like one piece. We're just overlapping a little edge of each piece. 
sort of like we would do if we were making a collage. When you make a collage, you overlap pieces. Could be all paper, could be mixed materials, fabrics, found objects. But for today, we're only working with construction paper and we're overlapping the construction paper. Okay, so here's my plate of ripped and torn paper. And now we're going to begin gluing. So I'm gonna bring the screen down again so you can see what I do and you follow my instructions, okay? I'll be right back. All right, so all my paper's collected in the dish and I don't need it there anymore. So I'm gonna gently put it right next to my plate where I'll be working. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add some glue. Now you could start in a small area to make it easier. So I think I'll do that. I'll start in this small area. And once I put the glue down, I'm gonna spread it around with my finger. You might wanna clean your finger when you're done. Otherwise, this, the construction paper might stick to them as you're working. So let's start. We're gonna start placing the pieces that we've ripped and torn onto the glue on the paper plate. Now, do you see where I overlap the two pieces? But I'm not hiding the first piece, I'm just overlapping a small piece. And I'm gonna continue doing that wherever I put the glue until there's no more area of glue that I need to cover. And I'd like you to do the same thing at home or in your classroom. Let's just start covering our paper plate with the glue. I'm sorry, with the construction paper in the area that's been glued. Try to cover any white that might shine through because we just wanna see our beautiful red apple. Or for some of you, you might add the yellow and green. Okay, and just continue covering all the areas of glue. Now I've run out of glued area, so what do you think I need to do? Yep, I need to add some more glue, and here we go. More glue to the plate. And this way I can add some more ripped and torn pieces. Now I'm gonna spread my glue don't be cheap with the glue we got plenty okay and also remember if there's things that you need at home that you don't have please let your teacher know and I'll be happy to send them home to you okay I'd hate for you to be watching a project and not be able to participate because you don't have supply so please please let me know if you need any supplies and I'll make sure that you get it Look how nice I'm covering all this glue area. Again, I'm overlapping pieces. Overlapping. Beautiful, right? Overlapping, overlapping. Look at that. Overlap the apple pieces. Whoopsie. And we're gonna continue until the entire plate is covered. And I could stay here with you while you're covering your plate. And I'll continue covering mine, if you don't mind. We can do this together till the very end, right? All right, I need to add some more glue. Let me put a little bit of glue on this piece. It looks like he's trying to sneak away. Can't have that. There we go, all better. I like to sing while I work. I hope you don't mind whether I sing words or just music notes. Yeah, I'll tell you, if I could sing, I'd be a music teacher. But unfortunately, I don't have a beautiful voice like our music teacher. Okay, but fortunate for you, you have a music teacher with a beautiful voice. Here we go. One after the other. Gluing them down, overlapping one on top of the other. Not covering it just overlapping on an edge. It's just fun. I love doing art projects, but you know what I love more than doing art projects? I love doing art projects with you because you guys are terrific. You are the best of the best. And 
we make great art together. And now, who could ask for anything more, right? Who could ask for anything more? See, I told you I didn't have a good voice. <laughs> but it still doesn't stop me. I'll sing forever. Singing makes me happy too. Almost as much as making art. Oop, starting to stick to my fingers. You find that might be happening to you as well. But that's part of it. Getting a little messy, a little sticky. But we're okay. We keep on going. I'm almost done. How about you? Did you almost cover your whole apple? Whew. I got one more glue to put down and I think I'm ready to move on. Now, if you have green or yellow paper at home, this is where you could add it to your apple. If you don't have green or yellow paper, just continue with the red construction paper and just have a fully red apple, which is good too. But like I said, I have a scrap box and I use those scraps. So I'm gonna start tearing some of my yellow pieces to make the yellow apple. And I'll also tear some of the green pieces too. Because the gala apples that I picked at the apple orchard, they had the yellow in them. And I like that. And I wanna make my apple look a little more realistic than just the red apple. Because those are the apples I have at home the yellow and red. See how nice that's looking? Just adding a little bit of that yellow construction paper in here. And I think I'll continue with the green from this point on. I think the rest of this apple is going to be green, okay? I'll save a little piece for the leaf that I'm going to connect to the stem. And I'll make the rest of this apple green. I like it. You like it? I do too. If you just have red, keep going with the red. Keep adding the red to your apple till you, the whole plate is covered. Okay. Very, very good. But I want you to save one red piece. Save one red piece and I'll show you why when we're there. All right, next, we'll put that aside to dry. And we'll take that little piece of green. I may have pre-cut a leaf for you, but if not, I'm going to make a leaf. I believe I did pre-cut them for you and send them home or send them to your class. But if not, we're just gonna make this shape to create a leaf. Now you see these two little scraps? They're going in my scrap box. I'm not throwing them away. And I'm going to make a brown stem that comes out of the top of my apple. And I'm gonna glue these two pieces together because the leaf is attached to the stem. Voila! Now I'm gonna turn my plate upside down and glue this to the back of my apple. Now let me just see where the side is there. I'm gonna make this as the top of the apple right here. So I'm gonna glue my stem to the back of my apple. Count to three. One, two, three. All righty. Turn them right side up. And do you see my stem? Hold on. Bring him up a little bit so you can see better. Okay. Here's my apple with the stem. It's down a little too low, so I'm going to pull it up a little bit. How's that look? Better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. So we'll let that dry. In the meantime, I'm going to place this down. And we're going to concentrate on the worm. So let's grab our little fuzzy brown pipe cleaner. And the first thing we need to do is we're gonna bend them in half. And when you bend them in half, you want each end to touch. Once they touch, we squeeze together till it's in half. Then we're going to bend the bottom piece, say about the thickness of a thumb, and bend it like the letter L. See how I made the letter L? If that's backwards for you, I'll turn it this way. This is the piece that we're going to mount to the apple. With the worm, we're gonna curve him a little bit, any way you want. All right, so let's put a nice piece of glue right in the center of this apple, because this is where the, the worm's gonna to stick to. See this? 
Now remember I said to save that one piece of red. Let's add some glue to the back of one piece of red. And we're going to put that right over that bent piece of our worm. It's going to help him stay in place and it's also going to cover that piece that's glued to our apple. Now we need those two little white dots. Now I can't find mine because I'm working on this white table so I'm just going to make two new fresh white dots. And look what I'm making it out of. A piece of a paper plate that I did not throw away. Again, this is why I don't throw things away. I'm going to put my dots on this green paper so you can see what I'm doing. Oh well, I gotta make another dot. I just lost one. They're so tiny, you gotta be careful. Okay, so I have two dots. You see my two dots? Now, watch what I'm gonna do with my marker. I got my black marker. I'll put this down. And I'm just going to put a big black dot right in the center of one dot. Flip them over. Little hard to handle. And another black dot, because I'm making his eyeballs. Remember, he's going to be super surprised that somebody's eating his house. <laughs> now I have two dots that need to go on the end of our pipe cleaner. So I need to put two dots of glue at the end of my pipe cleaner. One, two. May come up out to be one blurb of glue. Can you see the glue on my pipe cleaner? Now let's put an eyeball on the pipe cleaner. Here's one eyeball, and here's the other eyeball. Whoopsie. Now remember, if you can't do this, you have somebody help you. Because as you can see, even Miss Lisa has, is having some trouble. There we go. <gasps> Does it look like he's scared? That's because we're entering the apple where he lives or where he's dining. So we have our red apple with a worm inside saying, oh my goodness, who's coming? I'm sweating, whew, is it hot in here? Okay, now, this is it for the day, kids. I hope you enjoyed making your apple. I hope you're happy to be back at school amongst your friends. If you're home, I hope you're happy and safe at home. And don't worry, we'll be together again. Just gotta ride it out. Stay healthy, stay happy, but always remember to keep art in your life. Because if you keep art in your life, it keeps your mind busy, it keeps your heart happy, it keeps your soul smiling. And what better than that? So guys, this is Miss Lisa saying, ciao for now from my table of art. And I'll see you all next week with something new and exciting. Okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>